Section 9 of A Holy Life The Beauty of Christianity by John Bunyan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 9. Third, in the next place, I come now to those arguments that do respect thyself. First, those that religiously name the name of Christ should, must depart from iniquity, because else our profession of him is but a lie. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie. First John 1 6. And walk in darkness, that is, and walk in iniquity, and depart not from a life that is according to the course of this world. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Chapter 2, verse 4. The truth that he professes to know, and that he saith he hath experience of, is not in him. Every man that nameth the name of Christ is not therefore a man of God, nor is the word in every man's mouth truth, though he makes profession of that worthy name. 1 Kings 17.24 It is then truth in him, and to others with reference to him, when his mouth and his life shall agree. Revelations 2.2 2 and 9 and 3 9 men may say they are apostles and be liars they may say they are jews that is christians and lie and be liars and lie in so saying now this is the highest kind of lying and certainly must therefore work the saddest sort of effects thus man's best things are lies his very saying i know him I have fellowship with him, I am a Jew, a Christian, is a lie. His life giveth his mouth the lie, and all knowing men are sure he lies. 1. He lies unto God. He speaks lies in the presence and to the very face of God. Now this is a daring thing. I know their lies, saith he, and shall he not recompense for this? See Acts 5 and 4. Revelations 21 and 8, and 27, 22 and 15. And take heed, I speak to you that religiously name the name of Christ, and yet do not depart from iniquity. 2. He lies unto men. Every knowing man, every man that is able to judge of the tree by the fruit, knows that man is a liar, and that his whole profession as to himself is a lie, if he doth not depart from iniquity. Thus Paul called the slow bellies, the unsound professors among the Cretans, liars. They were so in his eyes, for that their profession of the name of Christ was not seconded with such a life as became a people professing godliness. Titus 1, 12-16 They did not depart from iniquity. But again, 3. Such a man is a liar to his own soul. Whatever such an one promiseth to himself, his soul will find it a lie. There be many in the world that profess the name of Christ, and consequently promise their soul the enjoyment of that good, that indeed is wrapped up in him, but they will certainly be mistaken hereabout, and with the greatest terror will find it so, when they shall hear that direful sentence, Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Luke 8 and 27. Christ is resolved that the loose-lived professor shall not stand in the judgment, nor any such sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They have lied to God, to men, and to themselves. But Jesus, then, will not lie unto them. He will plainly tell them that he hath not known them, and that they shall not abide in his presence. But, second, those that religiously name the name of Christ should depart from iniquity, else as they are liars in their profession, so they are self-deceivers. I told you, but now such lie to themselves, and so consequently they deceive themselves. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. John one twenty two. It is a sad thing for a man in and about eternal things, to prove a deceiver of others. But for a man to deceive himself, his own self of eternal life, 
this is saddest of all yet there is in man a propenseness so to do hence the apostle says be not deceived and let no man deceive himself and again verse twenty six if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain these words but deceiveth his own heart i have much mused about for they seem to me to be spoken to show how bold and prodigiously desperate some men are who yet religiously name the name of christ desperate i say at self-deceiving he deceiveth his own heart he otherwise persuadeth it than of its own self it would go ordinarily men are said to be deceived by their hearts but here is a man that is said to deceive his own heart flattering it off from the scent and dread of those convictions that by the word sometimes it hath been under persuading of it that there needs no such strictness of life be added to a profession of faith in christ as by the gospel is called for or that since christ has died for us and rose again and since salvation is alone in him we need not be so concerned or be so strict to matter how we live this man is a self-deceiver he deceives his own heart self-deceiving and that about spiritual and eternal things especially when men do it willingly is one of the most unnatural unreasonable and unaccountable actions in the world one it is one of the most unnatural actions for here a man seeks his own ruin and privily lurks for his own life proverbs one eighteen we all cry out against him that murders his children his wife or his own body and condemn him to be one of those that has forgot the rules and love of nature but behold the man under consideration is engaged in such designs as will terminate in his own destruction he deceiveth his own soul two this is also the most unreasonable act there can no cause nor crumb of cause that has the least spark or drum of reason or of anything that looks like reason be shown why a man should deceive himself and bereave his soul of eternal life therefore three such men are usually passed over with astonishment and silence be astonished o ye heavens at this and be horribly afraid for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water jeremiah two eleven through thirteen but above all this as to this head is the most amazing place where it is said that the self-deceiver makes his self-deceiving his sport sporting themselves with their own deceivings second peter two thirteen these are a people far gone to be sure that are arrived to such a height of negligence carelessness wantonness and desperateness of spirit as to take pleasure in and make a sport of that which will assuredly deceive them for ever but this is the fruit of professing of christ and of not departing from iniquity the wisdom and judgment of god is such as to give such over to the sporting of themselves in their own deceivings fourth those arguments that respect the world first those that religiously name the name of christ should depart from iniquity because of the scandal that will else assuredly come upon religion and the things of religion through them upon this head i may begin to write with a sigh for never more of this kind than now there is no place where the professors of religion are that is clean and free from offence and scandal iniquity is so entailed in religion and baseness of life to the naming of the name of christ that one may say of the professors of this age as it was said of them of old all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean isaiah twenty eight eight where are they even amongst those that strive for the rule that mind it at all when it pinches upon their lusts their pride avarice and wantonness 
are not nowadays the bulk of professors like those that strain at a gnat and swallow a camel matthew twenty three twenty four yea do not professors teach the wicked ones to be wicked jeremiah two thirty three ah lord god this is a lamentation and will be for a lamentation what a sore disease is now got into the church of god that the generality of professors should walk with scandal no fashion no vanity no profuseness and yet no niggardliness but is found among professors they pinch the poor and nip them from their due to maintain their own pride and vanity i shall not need to instance particulars for from the rich to the poor from the pastor to the people from the master to his man and from the mistress to her maiden all are guilty of scandal and of reproaching by their lives the name of the lord for they profess and name that worthy name of christ but are not as they should be departed from iniquity one hence the name of god is polluted and reproached even till god is weary and cries out pollute ye my name no more with your gifts and with your idols ezekiel twenty thirty nine o oh, do not pollute my name says god rather leave off profession and go every one to his wickedness tell the world if you will not depart from iniquity that christ and you are parted and that you have left him to be embraced by them to whom iniquity is an abomination it would far better secure the name of god from scandal and reproach than for you to name the name of christ and yet not to depart from iniquity then though you sin as now you do the poor world would not cry out ay this is your religion then they would not have occasion to vilify religion because of you since you tell them that christ and you are parted but two if you will not leave off to name the name of christ nor yet depart from iniquity you also scandal the sincere professors of religion and that is a grievous thing there are a people in the world that have made it their business ever since they knew christ to cleanse themselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit and that desire to perfect holiness in the fear of god and you scandalous professors mixing yourself with them make their gold look dim lamentations four one you are spots and blemishes to them jude twelve you are an evil mixing itself with their good and a scandal to their holy profession second peter two thirteen you are they that make the heart of the righteous sad whom god would not have sad you are they that offend his little ones o oh, the millstone that god will shortly hang about your necks when the time is come that you must be drowned in the sea of deluge of god's wrath three if you will not leave off to name the name of christ nor yet depart from iniquity you continue to extend your scandal also to the word and doctrine of god they that name the name of jesus religiously should so carry it in the world that they might adorn the doctrine of god their saviour but thou that professeth and yet departest not from iniquity thou causest the name and doctrine which thou professeth to be blasphemed and reproached by the men of this world and that is a sad thing a thing that will bring so heavy a load upon thee when god shall open thine eyes and he will open them either here or in hell fire that thou wilt repent it with great bitterness of soul first timothy six one the lord smite thee to the making of thee sensible to thy shame and conversation if it be his blessed will amen but for if thou wilt not leave off to name the name of christ nor yet depart from iniquity thou wilt bring reproach scorn and contempt upon thyself for sin is a reproach to any people proverbs fourteen thirty four one these are they that god will hold in great contempt and scorn isaiah one two these are they that his people shall have in great contempt therefore saith he have i also made you contemptible and base before all the people according as ye have not kept my ways but have lifted up the face against my law malachi two nine jeremiah twenty five nine and eighteen 
three such shall also be contemned and have in derision of the men of this world they shall be a hissing a byword a taunt and a reproach among all people for them that honour me saith god i will honour and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed first samuel two thirty i remember that philpot used to tell the papists that they danced with their buttocks uncovered in a net because of the evil of their ways isaiah twenty four and the lord bids professors have a care that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear or lest they walk naked and their shame be discovered for those professors that depart not from iniquity however they think of themselves their nakedness is seen of others and if it be a shame to the modest to have their nakedness seen of others what bold and brazen brows have they who are not ashamed to show their nakedness yea the very shame of it to all that dwell about them and yet thus doth every one that religiously names the name of christ and yet doth not depart from iniquity End of section 9, recording by Scarlet, Louisiana.